Hello, I'm Robbie Bolo with the new quarterbacks coach at BYU, Jason Beck. We just realized you were here when I was a freshman, so I don't know if that makes me old or you young, but we're glad to have you we'll back. Take was me being young. Okay, that works. Was this a kind of a dream for you to return to BYU? Did you always want to do this when you started coaching? Yeah, I mean, BYU, you know, as a player was the place I wanted to come as I was getting recruited, and same thing as a coach. I mean, this is a special place, and we, my family and I love being here. So when you knew the job was available, did you just itch at maybe getting to come back to your alma mater and coach? Yeah, I mean, I got a couple texts saying, you know, there would be some openings. And so when I, you know, was interviewing and those things, I um, was real excited about this opportunity. It's been several years since BYU had a new quarterbacks coach, and you played under the previous one, Brandon Doman. What do you maybe bring to the program that's unique? You know, I'm, the biggest thing I'm focusing on is helping these QBs develop their game, uh, being consistent in their reads, uh, being sharp in their execution, and then just playing hard and playing with, uh, you know, some excitement and passion. Do you think that a starting quarterback could be decided in spring? You know, we're going to let him compete, and if one guy emerges and separates himself, then, then yeah, he'll be named the starter. Um, so it's really just going to be a process that plays out, um, and somebody's going to earn the right to start here at BYU. Taysom Hill getting injured in the Hawaii game. He's still getting back from that injury and is a little limited. So given that, does he have a possibility to be able to show enough even though he's limited? Yeah, he was able to be out here today and take a lot of reps in 11 on 11. And so I think he'll get the opportunity uh, to compete and show what he has. You know, that could be a factor. If he's not able to do enough, then, then maybe we'll go into the summer and into fall. Um, but yeah, we'll just let it play out and see how it goes. He was the number two guy before he got hurt. So is it his job to lose, or do you come in, clean slate for everybody, give them all a chance to compete at an equal level? Yeah, it's a clean slate for everybody, and that's for the whole offense. Everybody's starting from zero, and everybody's out here competing, and, and they're going to earn their right to, right to play. What have you learned from these quarterbacks so far in the little time you've been able to spend with them? You know, they're very sharp, hardworking. Um, they love BYU. They love football, and they're they want to play. I mean, they're working their tails off to earn the right to be a quarterback here at BYU. Some of the questions are, as a guy, you know, dual threat, can he run? Can he throw the ball? What kind of a quarterback were you when you played? I was a little bit of that dual threat. Um, I wasn't the most athletic, but I, you know, felt like I had a pretty good knack for, for running and making plays that way. And, and with this offense, um, you know, if a guy's mobile and, and able to use that as one of his weapons and tools, it's going to help him. Anywhere else on the football field at these positions, you know, multiple guys will play at receiver, for example, but a quarterback, only one guy can play. You know better than maybe anybody of how talented a backup can be, so how does that help you as you're going and working with all these guys knowing, hey, one's going to maybe get a chance to be the starter and others are going to be like me, be a great quarterback but in support? Yeah, I mean, you hope you have one guy that plays well and is healthy and he starts every game for you. That's what you want. But for the other guys, I mean, they just got to keep battling and know when an opportunity comes that they need to be ready to make the most of it. You've also played with Robert and I before, so now with him back, what can you expect from a Robert and I offense? You know, um, Coach and I is going to do some of the things he did before here, some of the traditional BYU pass game, but he's brought some other wrinkles uh, from the other stints he's had, and so it's going to be a little different. It's going to be some of the some of the old BYU under him, but some new stuff, and so um, it's going to be a lot of fun. How did Taysom look, and what about what percentage is he at as far as his recovery? You know, he feels really good. Um, the trainers are telling him to stay about 80, 85 percent, especially when he's running, just so he doesn't go all out and, and you know threaten anything that way. But he says he feels really good and and he looks good. I mean, there's nothing too noticeable. It's just a matter of not letting him reach that top end when he's running with the football. Too early to rank these guys, uh, these quarterbacks under you, or, or in your mind, have you already kind of got a? No, too early. We're just letting them go from, from scratch. You know, we went kind of off seniority, so Taysom's played. Uh, so he got the, the first reps. And then Munns is the next, next most experienced guy, so he got the second, so we just went from there. And we'll let it play out these first five, six practices, let them compete, and then slowly start giving guys more reps based off performance um, and let them settle in that way and then let things emerge as, as they go. So the seniority is based on uh, game time reps that they've taken? Kind of, you know, with starting here, kind of gives a little, you know, seniority to he's started a couple games and so, and then just based off time or and, in the program. And so Hill would have more seniority than Munns, even though Munns is the uh, older guy in the program. Yeah, and so that's how we did it today. Since Taysom started a couple games, he got the first, you know, reps with the first guys, and then Munns, um, having been here the longest of the other guys, uh, went with the second group and, and so on. And then we'll switch that up as we 
as we go. How hard is it going to be just as far as the quarterbacks go when you've got a, you know, installing a new offense and uh, entirely new offensive coaching staff? Is there more on their plate just because of that situation? You know, a, a little bit, but it's even more because of the tempo that we're trying to go at. So instead of having 40 seconds to get a play and execute it, we're trying to get them doing it in 15 to 20 seconds. So it's processing all that information as fast as they can go, uh, pushing that tempo. So that's the biggest strain that the QBs are going to have is, is just processing information and executing the plays at a, at a fast pace. As far as the staff goes, I don't know if you've been in a situation where uh, the entire offensive staff has been coming in kind of brand new. Anaya, of course, is a little bit different. But what that, what's that like as far as being a coach? You know, it's a lot of fun because everybody's just eager and working hard and, and doing everything they can to make this team be successful. And, and it's nice for the players because they just get a clean slate. They don't feel like, you know, any judgments have been made on them because everybody's new and so it's it's a lot of fun for everybody just to start from square one and go as hard as they can go and, and compete. Okay.